So now we're going to perform the Anderson Darling test by hand in a spreadsheet software. If you want, there's a link in the below that will, in the description below that will take you directly to and open up the workbook that we are going to be making here. In that workbook, it's going to open up this video and you can follow along right in the workbook. Or you can download the Excel workbook and do it in Excel. It's totally up to you. I'm going to do it in our wonderful software, ENG Sheets. All right, so now it is loading here. And it's going to ask me to sign in. I'm already signed in because this is my work computer. And I've been successfully signed in. So if you're already signed in, it should automatically take care of that for you. If you are not signed in, you'll have to sign in. It goes through Microsoft, and then Microsoft just lets me know who you are. That way I can determine if you have access to QE Suite. Um, if you do not, you will automatically be given a two month free trial, um, in which time you can use this to your heart's content. And I really encourage you to because it is wonderful software. All right. So here we are, and as I mentioned, let's say you just go to engsuite.org slash engsheets slash web. If you click this learn and then click on the Anderson Darling, that will load this workbook and a little task pane will pop open over here with this video for you to follow along. We'll go back to the home. All right, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is get our data here. The data is in the description, so go ahead and copy that and then you can just paste it right in. Okay, so next thing we're going to do, and I better pull up my notes because we have a lot to type. Okay, here we are, and I'm ready to go. And what we're first going to do is in this column here, C1, we're going to type in AD test statistic. And we go all the way over to I, and we're going to merge that. Okay, so our first column is just going to be I. Our second is going to be Y. Then we're going to have C1, C2, Y, and minus I, whoops, I, and C3, whoops, C3, and S. Okay, awesome. So here, we'll just type in 1, and then we are going to just drag down, oops, not control, we'll drag down and that automatically increments our values. Look at that. And we're gonna have to go one more because we started one column down. Okay, so Y of I here, maybe I'll just do sort, sort, and then we're gonna select our numbers, close our parentheses, and look at that. Our data is sorted in ascending order, pretty cool. All right, so before we go on to C1, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to fill out some descriptive statistics here. So the first thing we're going to do is get the average, the mean of our data. Come over here. Then we're going to have to get the standard deviation. So stdev.s. Again, make sure you get all of the data here. And then we're going to need a count. So we're going to use the count function. Again, make sure you get all of your data. Okay, awesome. Now we can move back here into the C1 column. So we'll do equals. And this is going to be, let's see here, 2 times i. And then minus 1 divided by n. So we're going to come over here and we'll have to put some dollar signs in front of both the Q. Well, just the four really. I like to put it in both. There we go. And then if we double click on that, it automatically drags it all the way down for us. Pretty sweet. Okay, time to do C2. So C2 equals natural log of norm.dist and then we take our x value. So in this case, C2 is norm.dist of yi. So we're going to take yi, which is right there. And then we're going to take our mean. 
and then our standard deviation. And then we're going to make sure we type in true to get the cumulative distribution function. And oops, I forgot a parentheses. And there we go. And now what we're going to want to do is we're going to ma want to make sure that we make these absolute cell references for both of those. Then we'll hit enter and double click to drag all the way down. And look at that automatically fills out all of our data. Okay. Now we want to do y of n minus i. So this is just in sorted in descending order. So we're going to do sort. We're going to select our numbers here. And we don't care about sort index here, minus 1. And again, you might notice these functions all take the same format as Excel. That is on purpose. That way you don't have to learn any new syntax. There we go sorted in descending order. Now for C3, that is going to be the natural log of 1 minus norm.dist of y of n minus i, or technically n plus 1 minus i, and then our mean and our standard deviation. And we can close, not yet, sorry, we need to add true and then go ahead and close that up. And what we might want to do right now while we're in here is make these absolute cell references and enter. Double click to autofill. And then now we're going to start doing everything inside of the sum. So this is an, we called this one S. So this is C1 times C2 plus C3 in parentheses. So we take C1 times parentheses. C2 plus C3. And we hit enter, double click to autofill all the way down. Awesome. So now we have the innards of our entire Anderson Darling test statistic. All we got to do is put together our weighted values for each of these. So we're going to go into the cell 09, and we're going to call this one, um, we'll call it tutorial because then we'll run it with the QE Suite function just to see how fast and easy it is compared to doing it by hand because it is really cool and also to validate to make sure that we're getting the right results. We'll call that AD and P. Okay, so in here, our Anderson Darling test statistic is minus N, so minus N, minus the sum of all of these values. So if we take the sum of all of those, we get an Anderson Darling test statistic of 0 0.53768516. That doesn't really mean anything to us because we don't have a critical value for our Anderson Darling test statistic. So that means we're going to have to take and turn that into a p-value that we can then compare with our critical value. So in K1, we're going to type in p-value, and we are going to merge. So the first thing that we need to do to calculate our p-value is we're going to need the modified Anderson-Darling. Now, if you remember, that equation is going to be our Anderson-Darling test statistic times 1 plus 0.75 divided by n plus 2.25 divided by, we'll use the power function, n squared. All right, and there we go. There is our Anderson Darling modified test statistic. So now we're going to use our piecewise function to actually turn that into a p value. So I'll just call this column condition and I'll call this one p value. Okay, so our first condition, let me flip my page of notes here, is that Anderson, the modified Anderson Darling, is greater than or equal to 0.6. So what we're going to do here is we're really just going to calculate each of the p-values individually. And then over here, we'll use some if statements to make sure that we are um, doing, doing the, the logic here. But we'll just calculate them individually over here for now. Okay, so if the an modified Anderson-Darling is greater than or equal to 0.6, our p-value equals exp of one point. 
5.709 times the Anderson-Darling modified plus 0 0.0186 times, we'll use the power function, of 80 star squared. All right, looking good. We'll close up those parentheses. Now, we have another condition. If the Anderson-Darling test statistic modified, the AD star, is greater than or equal to oops, 0.34 or less than 0.6, then our p-value equals exp of 0.9177 minus 4.2. 279 times our AD star minus 1.38 times our AD star squared. All right, close up those parentheses there, enter. All right, our next condition is if 2 is less than AD star or is less than 0.34, and I need to put a 0.2. So if AD star is between 0.2 or 0.34 exclusive, then our p-value is 1 minus EXP. That 1 minus is so that we can adjust these p-values so that as the Anderson-Darling test statistic gets lower and lower, our p-value gets higher and higher. So 8.318 plus 42 point seven nine six times a d star and then minus fifty nine point nine three eight times power again of a d star squared enter there we go look it's getting real high here as we know if the p value were lower it, i mean if the anderson darling test were lower the p-value should be greater. But again, none of these are telling us anything yet until we use the logic. So our last condition is if a d star is less than or equal to 0.2, then again, 1 minus exp of 13.436 plus 101.14 a d star again times, don't forget the time sign, and minus 223.73 times power. We got to square it again, two, and close our parentheses. There we go. So we have our p-values if each of these conditions were met. And now we need to add in some logic here. Equals, and we're going to say if ad star is greater than or equal to 0.6, then our value, if true, is going to be that value. So we're going to kind of work our way in one direction here. If that's false, we're going to do another if statement. And in this case, what we're going to want to do for our logical test is say if AD star is greater than or equal to 0.34, then our value is going to be this condition. Else, we'll do another if statement, and we'll say if AD star is greater than 0.2, we'll do this condition. Else, if, actually, we don't need to, because if it fails all of these, then we know that it's less than or equal to 0.2, so then we can just return that, and then we close our, first, our last one, then our second one and our first one. Enter. There we go. There's our p-value. So let's use QE Suite. And we'll do QE.AndersonDarling. And we're going to go in here and collect our data. And we could hit it, just close it up right now and hit Enter. But I'm going to add this. And we'll hide our graph. There we go. Both of those match up. We did it. All by ourselves. we have now calculated the Anderson-Darling test statistic and the p-value for this data against the normal distribution. 
All right, that is a lot of work. It was so much easier just to use the QE Suite function, but now we know how it works. Now we know how QE Suite, Minitab, and any other software would calculate the Anderson Darling test statistic for the normal distribution. Now, maybe later when we're doing some maximum likelihood, we'll talk about maybe how to use this with other distributions. Um, again, what you would really be doing is in like your C2 or C3, instead of using a norm.dist, you'd use maybe a weibull.dist, like in Excel. Um, however, for today, since we're only talking about normality, we use this. Okay, but let's actually use these values to talk about this distribution. So, the Anderson-Darling test statistic, we return it because it can be nice to know, um, it's, it's cool to see, but really what we care about is this p-value here. So in this case, our p-value is 0.15. Our critical is 0 0.05. So our p-value is greater than or equal to our critical. Therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Because we use the Anderson-Darling goodness of fit test for a normal distribution with the specified location and scale of mean and standard deviation, we can assume that the data follow the normal distribution with mean and standard deviation as the parameters.